My name is Lucy Worsley and my new book is called If Walls Could Talk, An Intimate History of the Home. Normally, I spend my time in some very grand buildings. I work as chief curator at historic royal palaces, the most grand buildings imaginable. But for this last project, I've been out and about exploring the history of the home of normal people from all levels in society, from the Normans to the present day, a really ambitious project. And I've been looking at um, tiny little details of daily life, things like forks and underpants and toilet paper. And I've got down and dirty and I've tried out a lot of sort of domestic practices for myself. And you might well say, isn't this all a bit trivial? And I would say, no, it isn't. Constitutional history and political history and foreign affairs, all these big stories matter. But I think that if you look at the tiny details of daily life and you add them all up, you get an insight into a very different mental world. For my research, I tried out different lifestyles and I started off in the medieval period and I tried out life in a medieval cottage, which is just one room and it was the kitchen, the living room, the bedroom and the bathroom combined, not that a whole lot of washing went on. I also looked at sleeping arrangements in pre-modern times and in the medieval world people didn't care about privacy, they didn't want to be alone in their bedroom. Today you don't barge into somebody's bedroom, you knock on the door and you wait and maybe you shared your bedroom with a brother or sister growing up but imagine sharing your bedroom, even your bed with other family members, with your work colleagues, even with strangers but medieval people were happy to do this because they would be warm and they'd be safe. If several people were sleeping in the bed there are rules about how you get in and the order is against the wall the young women, the daughters. Then comes the mum, then comes the dad, then comes any sons, then comes any strangers, visitors to the house like a travelling tinker or a pilgrim. And you can see the idea is to keep the young men away from the young women. I also researched quite an interesting sleeping practice that's called bundling. And here a young man and a young woman spend the night together in her parents' bed. But there's no hanky-panky. Both parties are tied down with ropes or a board is put down the middle. And the idea is that they spend the night just chatting to each other to see if they get on well enough to get married. So it's like a compatibility test. And this happened in rural areas right up to the end of the 18th century in Britain. It's quite extraordinary to think of, but it was a key step along the journey where marriage becomes a matter of personal choice. Perhaps the most interesting room of all is the bathroom, which has the shortest history. Bathrooms have only been around really for the last 120, 30 years. And here I was really amazed to learn that it wasn't technology that governed their development. It was social ideas about health and hygiene. Did you know, for example, that the Elizabethans had flushing toilets? It was invented. And a book was published in 1596 giving instructions for making a flushing toilet and I've helped to reconstruct one and it did successfully flush down a handful of cherry tomatoes. It really worked, but it didn't catch on. And the reason is probably because it's actually much more convenient to have your maid bring your chamber pot to your bedroom. It's more private. Uh, nobody knows that you're walking to the loo. Uh, there's less smell. The waste is immediately removed and you never ever have to queue. That's a real advantage. I think everyone should read this book because everybody has a home, whether they hate it or love it, whether they want to move or stay there for the rest of their life, everybody lives somewhere. And it may be that your house is totally familiar to you, you know, every nook and cranny, but you could be surprised. I live in a boring modern flat, but after my research I really do see it with new eyes, behind the facade, behind the scenes, even the most boring of rooms has a really exciting story to tell. Mm -hmm.